Stan Jubilisco here, with just a little daydreaming on a frigid uh, afternoon in the black holes of Dakota Territory, the United States of Advanced Fantasies. Imagine that you have a spaceship that can accelerate at one gravity, that is, uh, 9.8 meters per second per second or 9.8 meters per second squared. Does that look like a 9 to you? Indefinitely. It leaves the Earth and begins accelerating and you stand on its floor with the acceleration equivalent of 1 G or one gravity. You know, it takes a little while for your rocket engines to get up to speed, but not particularly, uh, not a particularly high speed. One gravity is something that you're used to, so you begin your journey. And you do it for a long period of time years, what seems to you to be years, so that you would eventually attain extreme speeds. Now Stephen Hawking, I believe the astronomer Stephen Hawking has indicated that within the span of a human lifetime you could travel millions of years into the future because of relativistic time dilation by doing this. You accelerate half the time you reach the far distant point, however many light years away that is, from the solar system and the galaxy. And you turn around, briefly you're weightless, but you decelerate, uh, and uh, well, if you go on an elliptical path, you wouldn't necessarily ever have to be weightless. You just end up having to stand on the ceiling for the return trip, as opposed to the floor for the trip on the way out. But your rate of deceleration would again be 1g or 9.8 meters per second squared. And eventually you would return to Earth. It might seem, oh, several years or even decades by your way of thinking. But because of a relativistic time dilation from the standpoint of the Earth, millions and millions and millions of years would have gone by. And you would return to the Earth, say, 10 million years into the future, plus 10 mega years. 10 million years into the future, what do you think? the Earth will be like. It, it will not have evolved far enough along so as to be significantly different in terms of its evolution uh, I comparing to its entire lifetime. The climate would be, well, it's hard to say what the climate would be. Would humans still be here? Or what, what form would they take if they were? You'd find all those things out when you got back to Earth. But there's just one problem. You can travel forward in time, according to relativity theory, but there is no going back. You can go forward further if you've got the fuel. Well, how you'd get that volume of fuel, uh, we're just sort of dismissing as a, a, it's a major problem, but we're just sort of setting that aside and pretending it doesn't exist for the moment. You come back, millions and millions and millions of years in the future and you're stuck with whatever you've got. H.G. Wells, this, the great science fiction author, wrote a story called The Time Machine once. You may have seen the movie, in fact, in which he did precisely that. He traveled into the future, but he also found a way to come back. According to real relativistic theory, you can't come back. 
you are stuck wherever you go. Talk about escaping. Sometimes I think about ex escaping to the to, to a cabin in the mountains. I even looked at a couple of cabins up in the Bighorn Mountains of Wyoming and one on top of Casper Mountain. Decided against uh, moving there, fortunately, because the difficulties of simply surviving would occupy all my time and, and it might get a little bit tiresome. I, I like to be able to do something besides just survive. But here, where would you get your food? Who knows? Would you even be able to survive? Would the earth have been destroyed by human activity? Or would some other catastrophe have taken place, such as an asteroid impact? Or would perhaps a new society have evolved? An asteroid impact that reduced the population to just a few, from which a new and more benevolent generation arose. In the... Uh, in the Holy Bible, I dare I mention that book, Jesus talks about a catastrophe followed by the next generation. He talks about, you will not see these things in this generation, but in the next. Would this be the next? Would you be welcome there? What would they think as your spacecraft descended to a soft landing on some rocky outcropping, presumably on some alien sea which had been morphed into some completely different shape over all those millions or billions of years. Just fantasizing. The really cool thing about it though is that in theory this is possible. It's not pure fantasy. Someone may actually make a trip like this someday. Would you want to do it? I don't think I would. But some people might. They'd never be able to tell us what they found. Stan Jubilisco signing off. Until next fantasy. So long.